Hey guys, welcome back to JB Breaks Free. I hope you're having a great day, a blessed day, getting a little bit better than yesterday. I am trying to do the same. Today I am home with a sick kid again, my poor Haley. Uh, she has pink eye and she's, she's doing her best and she has an appointment today at 2.15, but that means no Instacarting for me today. Uh, the, the family's been kind of sick all the previous Mother's Day weekend. We kind of had to switch our plans around Sunday and happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Uh, yesterday I was able to get out and Instacart made a hundred bucks in about four hours. That was good. And I'm kind of just getting over the sniffles myself. So doing what we can for the fam and doing what I can at home today. Um, I wanted to talk about how to make money selling records that nobody wants. This was a recent record score I had. I think this was actually two weeks ago I got this score. And so I went and it was a sale and it advertised records. And I saw some pics and it looked like a ton of records there. I mean, I couldn't sleep the night before. I was so excited to get in there. I had messaged them early. I'm like, can I, you know, if you want to sell any records early, let me know. You know, most people don't like that. So worst comes to worst. So I show up an hour early to the sale and not, I know, just kind of feel it out. And I was ready to sit there till nine or like once a, a line started, you know, I didn't want to be like the crazy early bird guy, even though I was excited. And so I get to the sale and I saw somebody that I know. Um, her name is Lisa. And I'm, so I went up to the driveway Hey, you know, I'm checking out. She's like, I already turned a few people away. Um, the guy who's kind of really running the sale right now, probably be angry, but you know, like we're close friends. So she's like, I'll let you in. So I'm like, okay. So I take a quick peek. I'm rifling around the records. Um, I kind of want to get out of there before this guy comes back. And I pulled out, we'll say seven records. And there was literally shelves and shelves, probably 350 records. Easy, not even counting 45s. I just pulled out a few, about seven records, which I've previously sold, like Fleetwood Mac Rumors, a couple Springsteens, uh, CCR, um, a few other ones that I pulled out because I was just going quick or scratched. I, you know, whatever. I made like 30 bucks and it saved me some time getting into the sale early. So next part of the story is I get to work. And, you know, I, I told you I, I know these people kind of well. When the guy comes up to me and he's like, how much, you know, you take all the rest of the records for 25 bucks and shelves and shelves of stuff there. But I knew that it wasn't great. You know, I knew, I mean, it's not like it's shelves and shelves of Beatles and Rolling Stones and stuff like that. So, okay, 25 bucks. So I'll meet you the next Saturday. I'll meet, I'll meet you at nine o'clock. So I show up there and there they are. The records are there. And um, there were all these cases. There was a bunch of these. Now these are the 45 cases and these are the 12 inch. Piece. So the small 45s and the 12s. And there were two of these, two of these big ones, and I got five of these small 45 ones. And I didn't even look at the 45s when I had gone because I was just, you know, just blasting through. And I'm like, okay, 25 bucks. So I get there and I'm probably like, oh man, these records aren't going to be worth money. But then things started to hit me. Um, of where the money was. So I paid $25 for probably 350 or so records, maybe more, maybe 400, not even counting the 45s. So how am I gonna make money on these records? First, I got, there's always just random records. Well, first, these cases. So look these up on eBay, brown, vintage, 45 RPM cases. All the 45s were in there. I have since taken the 45s out. There were hardly any that were worth money. I lotted them up in a lot of 200 and sold them for 25 bucks. So I'm even. There's these cases. People don't like look at these when they're selling the records a lot of the times. They just think about the records that are in there and the worthless records that are in there. Um, I mean, these are 20 bucks a piece. I have five of them. So that's 100. I have two of these, 20 bucks a piece. What's 140? And even if they're 15 bucks a piece, which whatever, it's still, you know, that's quite a bit. So anyways, 140. Um, 
there was a lot of worthless records in the lot. So what I do is I, I take the records out, and this might be a little bit of sacrilege, but I put them in stacks of 50 and I sell these basically wicked scratched or just kind of worthless records um, in lots of 50 for arch cracks, de decorations, $10 for 50. And I got six piles over there. So there's another 60, there's 200. While I'm taking out the records, I keep the company inner sleeves, MCA, MGM, Credence Inner, Tamla. Uh, people collect these, the capital ones. Um, Playboy ones, Playboy had record company. Anyways, Dynaflex, Liberty. Keep these inner sleeves. People collect these. Um, who knows? 10 or 15 bucks. Um, and then I keep these clear white ones and I use them for me because a lot of times you'll find the records and they won't have the inner, even the generic inner sleeve with them and you got to buy 20 to 50 generic inner sleeves. Those are worth money. This record right here, one of the first I pulled out, sold at auction for 45 bucks. That's just one of the about... 150 records I still have to go through. Nothing crazy, but it will sell. Um, the Stereophonic, it is uh, London. It's FFSS, Full Frequency Stereophonic Sound. If you ever see FFSS, these records are worth money for the Londons. So, you know, I'll take 25 for that, whatever. The 78 RPMs, they were all basically worthless. I went through them. Again, take the company sleeves. People collect these things. Columbia. Now these aren't crazy ones. Victor. Capital. But again, there's money here. Not even counting the records. And there was about 70 worthless records uh, for the 78s. Nothing collectible. 10 or 15 bucks I'll put on it. So all of the 200... 45s that I already sold, all company sleeves. Bell, Electra, MCA, RCA, Epic. Um, I mean, just a massive stack here. Echo. People want to match these up. And this is beautiful, RCA. So I have a humongous stack here. Check out Google company 45 RPM sleeves. And no, the records that I took out of those were not matches. They were mix and matched. And yes, it's a bit sacrilege doing this process, but it's a way to make money. And that's what we're here for. There were four of these with worthless records in them. 10 bucks a piece. There's another 40. Um... So it's just crazy. So what's that? 140, 180, 192. That's about $220 or so, not even in records. And I pulled up the one record that had sold. You know, there's always a gem or a, you know, a needle in a haystack, a find in the big lot of records that somebody's going to miss. There's some $5, $10 records in there. I know it's some different stuff. Stuff that won't fly, but stuff that will sell. And I can lot that stuff up too. I'm already at 200 with profit without the records. I can just lot that stuff up, make another 100 bucks. And, you know, $300 for 225 bucks. You got to see money where it isn't. And there was also a lot of the 45 RPM jukebox strips, which I failed to bring to this video. Those are worth money too. So there's a lot of money out there, even with worthless records. Uh, you got to know where to find it, know where to look. I hope this video serves you well. Flipping is a huge part of my break-free journey and a huge hobby and something I enjoy spending my time on. I uh, love you guys. I'll talk to you on the next video.